Recently made a pocket calculator and a wireless communicator project using a BBC micro bit and one of these four by four membrane keypads. Very simple to attach. You just need some jumper wires, a uh, breakout board for your micro bit and a few lines of code uh, to scan the keyboard. And you can learn how a keyboard uh, works by scanning rows and columns. I thought I'd have a go at recreating a classic uh, game from the 1970s. I think it's probably still available today, a game called Mastermind, where you would set uh, a code of four different colored pegs that only you could see and your opponent would try and guess uh, the positions of them and you would give answers, you'd give clues to let them know how many correct colours they had in the right place and also if they had a correct colour but in the wrong place. Um, it's based on a much older game, um, I think, called Bulls and Cows. Um, a really old game and also there's a very early version for it. I've been looking at some really old computer programmes and uh, the Science of Cambridge MK14, I think, had a version of this written in just a few lines of machine code. I thought it was possible to do it in a few lines of machine code must be possible to create a micro bit version so i've made a micro bit version i'll put a link uh, in the notes to the video on the blog post so here's what you do it's based around numbers uh, the micro bit has come up with a four digit number um, the numbers each digit in the number is unique so the same number will not occur more than once and there are no zeros just to make it slightly easier so it works a bit like this so you enter the number so i'm going to put in one two three four as my first guess and press d to enter it and it says zero bulls so zero bulls and how many cows ah i've got two cows so let's write this down it's a good idea to make a note of this so my my guess was one two three four and i got zero bulls but two cows so that's good to know we might use that information in a minute to try and deduct what the real uh, number is that the micro bit's got. So I'm gonna change just one thing. I'm gonna go one, two, three, five as my next guess. So I'll go one, two, three, five, and we'll evaluate that. I'll press D. So I've still got zero balls, so none of them in the right place. Ah, but I've now got three cows. So I know that three of these digits are correct, and I can deduce from the change between the first guess and the second guess that five must be the right number but we know it's not in the right place so we can have a guess uh, let's jumble these around a bit um i'm gonna go two five oh i don't know we're missing a number here aren't we i'm gonna change one of them two five six one so i'm just gonna go crazy mix them all up two five six one and i will evaluate that ah i've now got three balls and zero cows so i've actually now got three digits in completely the right place now because i knew three of these were correct numbers in the wrong place and now i've got three in the right place i'm going to guess that it's the six that was wrong so i'm going to keep two five and i'm going to go mad and put nine in there and one and we'll try this out now two five nine one and evaluate it and fantastic i got it right i actually know that i got it right because i did cheat i built in a little cheat you can press a and b buttons together and the micro bit will tell you the answer if you get really frustrated but we got that and we did it in four moves now there are lots of ways you could improve this you could improve it by um maybe limiting the number of turns you could take uh you can make it more complicated by adding letters into the mix uh you could even create a radio two-player version of it if you wanted uh if you had two micro bits and uh two keypads like that let's have a look at the code for my mastermind or moo game that i've created uh, at the beginning we've got a little subroutine that uh, resets all the variables and everything back to zero uh, i've included some little instructions about how to play the game but also how you need to wire up your keypad which pins it needs to go to and some ideas for improving the game as well uh, so let's find the main uh, part of the program would be the forever loop so let's have a look so we've got a while true loop inside a forever loop now i've done this to make the uh, instructions the blocks inside the forever loop run a bit more quickly it will probably run okay without it but i've put that in anyway um i've got a function like a subroutine here that will scan the keyboard and work out which keys we pressed uh, on the keypad and this is my little cheat mode here if button a and b are pressed together uh, then we're going to show the number that you have to guess 
So let's look at the reset function. So it sets uh, various variables, number of turns you've taken, uh, the guess string, that's what, you're, what you've guessed, uh, the number to guess back to zero. And then this function here, uh, sorry, rather this loop here, um, generates a four digit number with random digits between one and nine but the clever bit here is it makes sure it doesn't pick the same number twice so as long as the number that it's picked doesn't already exist in that string the number to guess string uh, then it will add it to the string and it will do that up until the point where that string is four digits long. So uh, it's a quite clever little bit of code there, I think, to uh, generate a four digit number as a string, uh, but without including the same digit twice to make sure every digit is unique. And it shows, uh, guess my number on the screen. Um, the key presses are detected in the scan keys function here. This is pretty much the same function that we used in the calculator project and the communicator project, scanning every row in turn by sending a digital signal out on each row and then reading each column to see if you've made a switch. So uh, some of them don't do anything like hash and, full, and decimal point don't do anything. Others do. So if you type in a number, it will add it to the uh, guess string using the build string thing. And if you press button D to kind of evaluate, it will call this function here, call evaluate guess. Now what that does is it does a little bit of primitive checking. First, we'll make sure that your guess is four digits long. If it's not, it tells you it's not four numbers. It doesn't check whether your guesses have got unique digits in there. So that's something you could do to improve it. Uh, first test it does is to see if your guess matches the number that you that the micro bit has come up with obviously if they do you've won and it tells you how many you've got the right answer it tells you how many turns you took so you can uh, sort of play against yourself and try and improve your number of turns you take uh, to uh, to guess the number if not um, it needs to tell you how many bulls and cows you've got. Now remember, a bull is uh, a right number in the right place. A cow is the right number, but in the wrong place. Um, this is quite um, an interesting function. It took me a long time to come up with the second bit. I don't know why, but it did. Um, so we've got a, a loop here, a for loop. Um, that's going to go from zero through to three. Remember that the uh, positions of a string, there's zero index. So position zero in a string is the first character in that string. And what it does here is it compares the first uh, digit of your guess with the first digit of the answer. And if they match, then you've got a ball. And it will do that for each position it will go through. If the second digit in your guess matches the second digit, in the uh, number that you've got to guess. It's a match, it's a bull. So that's how it works out the bulls. Um, working out the number of cows, so right answers, right digits, but in the wrong place. For some reason, it took me a long time to come up with this. It's actually very, very simple. All it needs to do is if you haven't got a bull, let's check if you've got a cow. So is that number in that position, does it occur elsewhere in the string or anywhere in the string uh, in that case it must be a cow so that's how it works out the cows and it shows you the number of bulls and cows on the screen so there we go it's not actually that complicated it's a fairly simple program uh, very satisfying lots of ways you could improve it uh, as well as we talked about making sure that the digits in the guesses are unique you could limit the number of turns that you take so you've only got a certain number of uh, goes before you get thrown out of the game or you lose uh, or you could even maybe create a two-player version using radio where uh, one player sets a number and the other one has to try and guess it i'm not quite sure how that would work but it'd be interesting to see if you manage to improve on this or come up with a new project based on this idea hope you have fun playing it do let me know if you managed to build this and if you've got any ideas to improve it